fire. Her mother wanted to be cremated. In those final days, faint with pain, she would murmur, it's only right. Now, she too dreams of fire on skin and after the fire, ash. The stories they told each other. When she was a child, her mother kept her awake, whispering stories of the women who came before them, how they died before touching 40, cancer, plague, car crash, stroke, heroin, murder. Death snaked the double helix of their DNA all the way back to that fated ancestor who centuries ago secured their inheritance. Her mother stayed in bed most days, clammy with fever. Sometimes she succumbed to bursts of activity, raising the garden in one go. Other times the weeds sprouted wild, swallowing the house whole. At night, her mother climbed to the attic, rotted slats creaking beneath her bony feet. She had to coax her down, tuck her into piles of duck feather pillows and quilts. To lull her to sleep, she spun tales of old havelis with doors of carved wood, walls a dusty sindoor and dhu wafting through latticed windows. Fear brightened her mother's eyes. Where did you learn these words? The foreign sounds spilled from her tongue, unbidden, but to her mother, she said, at school. Before dawn, her mother would shake her. Tell me about your other world. Rubbing sleep from her eyes, she'd speak of snowy mountains in distant skies, of chittering monkeys clinging to stupas, snatching cameras and flowers from the hands of tourists, of lines of devotees, foreheads daubed with vermilion, prostrating before the many limbed gods of metal and stone. The first time, at the funeral service, the sea of black suits and wool coats blur in front of her. She sees them all standing by a murky river, the smell of singed flesh and smoke thick in the air. A few seconds, then the hall is back. The estate agent, her mother's lawyer, and the man from antique valuation deep in conversation. They had told her what she long suspected. Despite the sparse meals, harsh winters, and pennies clobbered together for cinema tickets, she is rich. Her mother had been rich, and her mother before her. A figure breaks away from the throng of mourners. There's something about this stranger, face shadowed, hands gloved in kidskin, which makes her think of her mother's dying rasps. She wants desperate, desperately to turn away. An old lady wearing a velvet coat of deep purple swoops in and blocks her view. She lets out a long, shaky breath. Poor dear, the woman says and clasps her hand, then drops it immediately. Her hands are always icy, even in summer when the temperature sails over 25 degrees, as if they were molded for hotter climes. Prudence tells me it's your birthday tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. A hard-boiled candy slipped into her pocket. When she looks up, the figure is gone. Ash. At the stroke of midnight, she turns 18. The next morning, she wakes to find the peacock lamp, the tapestry of a Moroccan mosque, and the glittering replica of the Kohinoor crumbled to ash.